take this time to welcome all of you all that are watching by internet from around the world we bless God for your life and we have sat from our revival I want you to know that we have read through every email we have read through just piles and piles and piles of prayer requests I think we stayed up the first night that they came in and went through just about every last one of them. And we want you to know that we are praying for you for real. And if you are watching tonight by internet and you want to be a part of what God is doing, on this coming Sunday we're going to be doing our 5 a.m. prayer for the first time this coming Sunday morning. Y'all acting like y'all kind of excited about it. I'm excited about it because I have been doing it now for about 17 years. And when the Lord first called me to 5 a.m. prayer, I really didn't even understand that it would be the mantle for my life. And God has been faithful I said, God has been faithful. And I am a firm believer that a praying person can get anything that God has. I said, a praying person can get anything that God has. And a praying person is never defeated. Somebody said, never defeated. Y'all act like y'all scared to say it. A praying person is never defeated. Best, thank you very much, lady, because I think she believed that. I said, a praying person is never defeated. You have a divine connection with God. Favor with God that cannot be explained. I'm excited about the word tonight because upon beginning this, this new series, I want you to get your Bibles and go with me to 1 Samuel. And I really want you to hear... What the Spirit of the Lord is saying to come and fix this computer like you should have before I got up here, please. Some of you are probably just looking at the way I do things, but I ain't playing. Ain't nobody got time to be playing and fumbling around in the Spirit. Amen, somebody. My mother used to say to us all the time when we were little, Maybe some of you all wasn't raised this way, but we were. My mother used to say, where you show out at is where you're going to get it at. Amen, somebody. And we don't have time for a lot of games and a lot of church games and a lot of political foolishness. Because people's lives are at stake. We're talking about destiny now. We're not talking about having church. This ain't no good time. This ain't no, I just went to church and the Lord touched me. No, this is deeper than that. We're talking about getting people to their destinies. And that's why when I began doing what I felt God was calling me to do, and he called it the warehouse, we don't need carpet. And we don't need a lot of fancy stuff. What we need is for the glory of God to be revealed in our lives. And what we need is, and I don't, I don't have to get no amens, because I'm, I'm already in a whole nother vein. And I said to the Lord, you know, whatever it is he want me to, to do, I want people to understand that when you are under the prophetic call of God, you're not afraid of change. And you're not afraid of being different. As a matter of fact, when you walk under prophetic anointing, you're supposed to be the first one to do it. If I was following behind everybody else, then what makes me a prophet? I didn't hear nobody saying nothing. If I was doing what everybody else is doing, then what makes me have a prophetic anointing? The prophetic anointing is designed for us to know the way that God is going before we even get there. The purpose of the prophetic anointing is for us to understand the direction of the Lord. And so if we're not careful, we can be planted in churches and, and, and really our lives is put on automatic. You know how you go on automatic? Automatic, it just automatically just jump on and automatically turn off and, you know, they open up the, 
open up service and you automatically praise God and they close service and you automatically shut down. Praise team, get up, you automatically praise God. The preacher, get up, you automatically open up your Bible. We're not on automation because that's not life. That's not life for real. And so what is happening is, though we have a system in place, and I will keep saying it, and I don't care who don't like me saying it, that we are living in a system, in a religious system that is working for nobody. Church in this hour is working for nobody. Because we are preaching stuff that have nothing to do with the way people have to live their lives. Our lives are not on automatic. We are going through hell. We are going through issues. We are going through changes. We are going through things that need to be addressed. So if you want us to do it God's way, then you got to talk about what I'm going through and give me the answer. God, I wish I had somebody to say amen right there. I'm not here to talk about, I'm not here to talk about Daniel in the lion's den. I'm not here to talk about that. I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about your life. I'm here to talk about why you shout in church for hours and days and days and months and years and you still in the same place. I'm here to talk about why your girlfriend don't know God, but she got a degree and a better job than you and you spend more time in church than anybody and you still don't have victory in your life. I'm here to talk about why we are professing to have a power that we cannot make operate. Oh, somebody sit down. Woo, Jesus. have to we have to now begin to present the gospel so that the the gospel is life applications when i get through speaking in tongues and rolling around i want to get up and know what god did for me this is not going to be the kind of ministry the lord did something and baby come on up here because i want you right up here with me I, yeah you come on come on baby that's my new baby she got she got saved. Her name is on the wall. I don't, I don't want the church to mess you up. Come on up here. I got to protect my babies. I got to sit right here in my seat next to Samuel. You see, I'm after new people. I ain't even after people. I don't, I, y'all, I just told God I want fresh people. I just want people that just want God. Just want God. Just want God. Serious about God. Wanting to understand God. Having a responsibility to teach them God. To teach them God, not religion. Because everybody shouting saved. I want, I want to tell you that. Everybody that preach don't have the Holy Ghost. Everybody wear a collar turned backwards ain't a real bishop. I want you to know that. Okay? Everybody you see singing in the choir ain't purged. I'm not hearing y'all talk about it. I ain't hearing nobody talk to me right there. Your life with God is spiritual. It is, it is, it is between you and God. So don't base it on nothing that you see in the pews. Because ain't none of that really real. What's real is a heart that comes out the God that is able to admit, God, I'm not where I'm supposed to be. I got shortcomings, but I love you, and I want you to wash me, and I want to be real in your sight. I want to be who I am until you cause me to grow. Not out to pretend to change for nobody. So we end up changing for people, but we ain't changed for real. So now we're teaching people how to be spiritually schizophrenic. You come to church and you one person at church and you another person at home. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. And we fix up and we put on church clothes to come to church. And y'all ain't saying nothing. Oh, go through a whole transitional thing. Just to come to church. People can't even come to church. Like, I ain't got nothing to wear to church. What but you got? I don't care if you got high pants. I don't care if they Daisy Dukes. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Because the person that's mad that you got it on is a person that's really got the problem. I ain't getting nobody to say nothing right there. So I'm going to just leave that one alone right there. And why she got, why, why her cleavage all out? Why you looking? Why her dress all short? Why you see that? Why your mind ain't on your business? What is wrong with you? What's wrong with you is you don't have one focus. We're going to preach about that. One, one focus. 
One focus. There ain't no scripture. One focus. We don't, we don't, we don't, and we don't even understand the power. That's why the Bible said that the children of the world are wiser than the children of God. Because they understand how to take things that are practical and put them into principle and stay focused enough until they accomplish it. We do the opposite. We ignore practicality and we hide behind spirituality. I ain't getting nobody, I'm gonna come on this side because I ain't gonna get nobody to talk to me over there. If you don't wanna know the truth, then don't, don't come to this building because we, you know what I'm saying? Because all that is, oh, I'm talking about taking, taking what is practical and, and starting to reshape your life. You starting to reshape your life. Not, not all this. And you know what I would, but I just need the Lord to help me. No, the Lord has already given you help. I'm not hearing y'all. I'm not hearing y'all. See, what you got to understand is that the Spirit of the Lord said that the Spirit of God is a very present help in the time of trouble. Help is a connective word. Whenever you hear the word help, you know what that means? That means you're so already, listen, you're already supposed to have a part of the equation before the Spirit comes. If the Spirit is going to help your infirmities, if the Spirit is going to help you, then what part are you presenting to the Spirit that you need help in? No, what you want God to do is do it for you. And God is not going to do it for you. He's going to help you to do it. Can't get nobody to say amen right there. I can't get nobody to say amen. Because, because spirituality becomes an excuse that we use for not, for not getting to our goals. For not being who God has called us to be. For not preaching the gospel. For not being the prophet that God has called you to be. For not being the nurse or the entrepreneur that God has called you to be. And first of all, because you don't even understand that the people that you even are around is a perfect example of what kind of person you really are. So if you really want to know what's wrong with you, you look at who you keep company with. I know, no, oh, y'all not gonna let me preach tonight. Oh, you're not gonna let me preach tonight, but I'm gonna preach it anyhow. Come on, sit down, cause we go, we're gonna, we're gonna walk through this. It says, it says here, that what caught my attention about this lesson, is I went to the scripture, and the Lord just kept saying to me, one focus. One focus. One focus, one focus, one focus. And so then you, 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 you said, well, what does it have to do with uh, me reaching my goal? What does it have to do with God doing what he desires to do in my life? Well, what we don't understand is focus is how we get there. We're not in revival now. This is, this is, this is. This is your building. You know what God began to show me? He said, it ain't nothing wrong with people. It's what's wrong with their diet. He said, it's what they eat that causes them not to grow up to be nothing. Ain't nothing wrong with you. It's your diet. See, I, 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 I can't. Because I can't even get people to excuse that from their own life. Because they're so used to people saying, and you're going to go to hell, and you're going to die and go to hell, and you ought, you ought to be ashamed of yourself, and you better get yourself together before God kill you. And you ought to, first of all, first of all, first of all, give us 50 feet. I'm getting ready to defend everybody in this building. First of all, give us 50 feet. Because whatever we are not, and we have been in church for 30 years, it is what you have fed us. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. A baby cannot mature unless you feed him the right thing. He can be born as a healthy baby, and you lack feeding him, and he will grow up retarded. He will grow up with issues. He will grow up with sick. Now, hold on a minute. It wasn't nothing wrong with your birth. You got born again the right way. It was what was wrong with your diet that had stagnated your life. Who am I preaching to? Y'all may be scared to say it, but I'm not. The Bible said, the Bible said, faith cometh by hearing and hearing about the word of God. So if you can't believe God, then what's missing? 
then what's missing? What you heard is what's missing. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Well, you, now I don't think prophets will hold on a minute because, because people have been preaching the word. Let me help you with something. There's a difference between a person preaching the letter and the person having the authority in the spirit to bring it to a level where they make a deposit in your soul. I'm not talking about preaching a message. I'm not talking about the organ and the piano. I'm talking about the power to have the kind of delivery that when the word hits your spirit, it changes you in your seat. Who am I talking to? I'm not talking about five years changing, ten years changing. I'm telling you that the word of God has the power to change you right now well y'all sit down because I don't want to get off change you in an instant change it's like somebody said well, well what do you mean by change us in an instant it's like castor oil you ain't got to be sitting there and I wonder is it going to work and I wonder and I wonder what and I I don't know about that eh? Is it? No, castor oil is castor oil. You take a couple of tablespoons of it, and it's going to clean you out. Now, now let me tell you, they can put some stuff in a bottle that's labeled castor oil. But you're going to know it wasn't real castor oil. When two, three days later, you still ain't been to the bathroom. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. I ain't hear nobody saying nothing right there. Because anybody can say they a preacher. Anybody can say they a prophet. But I tell you what, whatever you done heard them preach, give it a few days. And if it don't change you, if something in it don't shift you, I'm not hearing y'all. Then what you did was you sat under a label. You didn't sit under power. Wait, 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 sit down, sit down. Sit down, because I got to break. You didn't sit under power. I ain't, I ain't trying to make you make you shout tonight. I'm trying to I'm trying to make you think. I mean, it's power hitting your life to the point that long after you out of church, long after you out of church, church been over Tuesday night. This is Friday, and you get ready to do something. You still hear the word saying, "Don't do that." Hold on a minute. Watch yourself. Stay focused. Stay focused. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. I'm not hearing nobody talk. We're talking about a soul connection. We're not talking about an emotional connection. We the word connecting to your soul and your soul is leading and guiding you why because what is your soul my soul is my mind my will my intellect and my emotions so if the word does not change my mind my will my emotions my intellect I heard the letter I didn't get the spirit of the letter no, I just am I helping anybody? Cause see, I'm gonna feed you, and I'm gonna let you tell me if I'm helping you. Cause if I ain't helping you, I'm gonna do better. Cause I don't want you just coming up in here talking about your hand. I just mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. my 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 soul needs to be changed. My soul is my mind and my will and my intellect and my and my and my emotions. I don't want to just be saved. I just I just don't want the word to affect and cause a reaction in the emotional side of who I am. I, mm -mm, it's more to it than I don't know side. I thank you, Jesus. I, I love you. I just felt the power of God. Mm. What else is it going to do? It's supposed to affect your mind your thinking I gotta stay right there it's supposed to affect your thinking oh I'm gonna stay right there it's supposed to affect your thinking your thinking that's why you do dumb stuff that's why you sit and listen to dumb stuff that's why you can't move because something's wrong with you oh I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me I ain't hearing y'all cause I y'all 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 looking at me like wait, wait. I mean have you ever done stuff and said why not do that huh that was just a dumb thing to do. Because, because, watch this, because you had no word 
in that level of your mentality to help you make a decision. I want you to understand that all of this is connected. This is not outside. This is not the Spirit of God wandering over your life. And maybe one day you're going to bump into your destiny. You're not going to get to your destiny by accident. You're not going to bump. Listen, listen, you're not going to fumble in the purpose. You're going to your destiny on purpose. You're going to be the person that has the power to decide. That I'm going to be successful. I, I, I said that I didn't get a lot of people, so let me just let me just go to that scripture. I'm going to be successful. I'm not gonna keep working in the restaurant. First of all, the first mindset that has to take place is the fact that you are not under the Mosaic law. You're not under the law of God. We're looking for the manna. We're looking for you to bless us. And we just, like, I am the blessing. I'm, if I ain't got but two pennies, it's something that is in the fiber of my being. That when I get around people, they know that they've been blessed. There's something about me that makes people get into my bosom. Who am I talking to? Do you not know that there's something about you? See, I can't say that. Sit down because, because y'all don't believe that yet. I'm going too fast. I'm taking you too fast. No, sit down, because I, I just took y'all too fast right there. Sit down, baby. I'm going I'm to I'm just, I'm going to help you with this one. Hey, come on, I'm going to help you with this one. I'm going to help you, I'm going to help you with this one. Because, see, see, when you say, when you say one focus, the reason why the devil comes after your focus. And you can already know what God has called you to do. And, 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 and simple stuff, it's just like with prayer, you know, you can say, well, you know what? The Lord wants me to pray and the God has called me to prayer. The Lord has called me to be an intercessor. As soon as you stop praying, the phone start ringing and they care about start, everybody start acting crazy. And so-and-so don't have a flat and you got to come because, because the thing of it is that you don't know is that focus is the, th the focus on, watch this, the focus that is on what is before you in the step one of your life will lead you and it is the divine connection to your end destiny. So that's why the devil always tries to mess with your focus while you a little bit in nobody. That's why he try to keep you fickle. Cause I'm a teacher a good lesson right there. It's like, it's like if I'm teaching and, and, and ministering and then somebody get up to go walk out and you turn around and look. See, I understand something. If you don't begin to train your mind how to stay focused. In other words, I don't care if the whole section get up and walk out. If Prophet is about is saying something that I know is about to, y'all, it's about to break me through to my next level, then I gotta stay focused because what I gotta understand is the only time you're going to be distracted is when the devil just cut you off from something that God was about to do for you. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. That's when the devil come to make you mad and upset about stuff. That's why you got to learn how to pick your fights. You got to learn how to, to say to yourself, some stuff ain't even worth me giving the attention to because I know that God must be getting ready to do something that he ain't never done before because the devil is after my focus. No, 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 sit down, sit down. Sit down because, because I wasn't just, I wasn't just talking right then. So I'm going to say that one one more time. I said, and this may not be to all y'all in here, but I see some of y'all trying to well up and cry. Because this is your moment. So we're going to let you have your moment. And prophet's going to say it one more time for you to go ahead and get your breakthrough. I said the reason why the devil picking on you. The reason why he picking with your mind and picking with your thoughts and, and trying to mess with your mind. The reason why you have warfare. The reason why you driving down the street and the devil just messing with your mind. The reason why he keep waking you up in the middle of the night is because he don't ever want you to keep your focus. Because he knows that you are on the verge of the biggest breakthrough you have ever had in your life. He knows you are about to come in a destiny. Who am I preaching to right there? So let me prove it to you. Let me prove it to you. Baby, you getting it? You getting it? You getting me? His mother going to teach you. You going to be strong. They ain't going to know what happened to you. You going to go back to your little job. And you going to be in there wiping tables and stuff or whatever you do. And they going to be like, well, we got some. I'll be right there. I got your table. You going. I'll help you too. 
He's going to be like, what's wrong with her? After a while, you're going to be said, I'm going back to the kitchen. Anybody want me to bring you anything? Well, I got two ta- I got your tables too. I don't know what it did. My tables, I'll be back. I got everything. After a while, you're going to scam because you're going to be like, I run this restaurant. What y'all talking about? Y'all ain't saying nothing because see, I'm trying to build a ministry of people that say, I run this. I, I, see, I'm not getting nobody to talk back to me. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying to build some leaders in here. I'm trying to build some people that said, I'm not going to take no for an answer. I don't care if the door ain't open. I'm going to knock it open. And if they keep it closed, I'm going to kick it down because I'm not hearing you. I need somebody to start shouting if you believe that. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Let me just, let me just get this. Because, because it ain't nothing that you ain't about to have. Dead side. It ain't nothing that you ain't about to have. I'm not hearing y'all over here. It ain't nothing that the devil can hold up anymore. Do you understand what I'm talking about? God is repositioning you. Okay, let me tell you how. Let me tell you how. Sit down. Sit down. Let me tell you how. Let me tell you how. Let me tell you. I'm going to prove it in the scripture. The book of 1 Samuel. I'm going to prove it in the scripture. The book of 1 Samuel, the ninth chapter. And you're going to read it when you get home. I'm going to paraphrase it. The ninth and the tenth chapter. I want you to study it and read it. He said, you come back here and talk to my little babies. I ain't seen in a little while. I ain't seen y'all in a minute. I miss y'all. He said that um, Saul, and listen to this. This is, this is, this is, this, this is, this is real good. Saul was sent out to look for his father's donkeys. One pastor scripture called them asses. So, because I know some of y'all Bibles going to say asses and y'all going to be like, do prophets know? <laughs> Come on through it because half us in here cuss. He was sent out to look for asses. Let's just call it what it is. That's what the Bible said to me. Now you got, and see, that's what I'm talking about. We be sitting there talking about something. Ooh. And you just told Junior that right before you guys came to church. Get you. Come on in. Sit down, boy. That's the unpurged level. And we didn't turn around and say, Lord, forgive me. And you got three or four kids. I know, I know you done holler. Come, get over there and get all y'all at, over here. Sit down. It's in the Bible. Look around you now. You're in the wrong place. We ain't got no carpet. It's a warehouse. We real over here. Keep it real. We keep it real. You can't be preaching no fake gospel when you got ex-gang members and thugs and ex-drug dealers because they know when you just full of it. <laughs> so he said, he said he lost his father's donkeys and couldn't find the asses and he was searching and the Bible said he went in four different directions looking for these donkeys and I want you to see I want you to see how by yourself the devil will have you just everywhere looking for well I think I try I think I try selling popcorn and maybe that'll work and that don't work well I think I'll come over here and start selling umbrellas and then umbrellas don't work. But you know what I think I, I think I start making cookies. And then that don't work. And so what the enemy is doing is, he's got you chasing after your destiny. He's got you, y'all ain't saying nothing. He's got your focus on, 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 on just everywhere, just everywhere, just everywhere, just everywhere. But watch this, watch this. I want to show you an example of somebody that we don't even know that was in the making for greatness. Because when he began to search for his father's donkeys, nothing broke his focus. He kept looking for the donkeys and looking for the donkeys and looking for the donkeys and looking. For the donkey. Now this sounds like a focused person to me. 
Because he was miles away from his father. I mean, he could have got out there with his servant and said, now let's go to the party over there. Let's go. Uh, we, uh, let, let's go up here and have a little disco fun right quick. Or let, hold on. I tell you what, let's stop over here at Brother Wallace's house and enjoy ourselves. No, he just kept saying, and he kept looking so hard until finally the servant stopped him and said, there is a man that's in the city that they say he is a seer and he is a prophet. And why don't we go see him? Because I believe he can tell us. Now watch this, watch this. This person was getting ready to have an encounter with the prophetic because they were already a focused person. No, you, no, you didn't get what I'm saying. Because you keep talking about God when you're going to speak in my situation. I can't speak to you because I don't know where you are half the time. One day you want the business, the next day you don't. One day you want your family together, the next day you don't. I'm not hearing y'all talk to me. One day you want to be a businesswoman, and the next day you want to go back to working at McDonald's. I'm just trying to find a stable place where I can speak to you. I can't speak a word to you because you won't get home. Chris, how I'm doing? How I'm doing? Focused. Focused. But the Lord just, he told me to do this. The Spirit of the Lord came to me and told me to, to wash hair. I think you ought to come over here. Cause now I'm going to wash hands and God tell me something different. I'm going to stay right here. I'm going to stay right here. Because we don't know how to stick with it. We don't know how to stick with nothing. We don't know how to... I'm not hearing y'all talk to me. I'm going to just... I'm going to come over here because I, we don't know how to stick with it. We don't know how to stick. The first sign of trouble, we start running. The first sign, it ain't going right. We start running. We don't know how to stick with nothing. And what you don't know is that you're being tested with the small thing to see if you got the focus to be a millionaire. I'm not here. Nobody talk to me. I'm not here. No, 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 baby. The Lord is trying to test you with breakfast on Saturday morning. If it's your turn to cook breakfast on Saturday morning, he's trying to see if you're going to be consistent in that. He's trying to see if you have the mentality. Do you have the mental capacity to be a millionaire, to be a business owner. You can't even make your bed every day. What are you talking about? You can't even keep your hair the same way. Who am I? I'm not hearing y'all say nothing. Somebody say you helping me. Am I teaching? You might say, well, prophetess, look at you. Yeah. And the, 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 you just said, God, what God did in you is so powerful. You just all over the world and you just preaching a thousand. I've been preaching like this for 27 years. Are you crazy? I had to stay there. No, it didn't start out in auditoriums. It started out in storefront churches. It started out with me preaching to 10 people. It started out with God telling me, I want you to preach to these 15 people like you preaching to 15,000. Because there may not be thousands in here, but you may be preaching to somebody that's got thousands in them. Who am I talking to in this building? Woo, y'all. Y'all sit down. I just, I just. You see, I want y'all to understand something. I want you to really get what, what I'm trying to say to you tonight. Somebody in this building is huge. All right. All right. All right. I just hit. I just hit a wall. I just hit a wall. I said somebody. In this auditorium, it's huge. Because if you wasn't, I wouldn't be here and you wouldn't be here. There is no reason for a person of my caliber to be in a hot warehouse preaching to you except somebody that is watching my internet is about to become huge. Who am I talking to? Somebody in this building is about to blow up. Somebody in this building is about to get a breakthrough. Somebody give him a shot right now. I know who I'm preaching to. Y'all sit down before we tear this place up. How about shut up, You better act like I'm talking to you. 
You better claim it like I'm talking to you. God ain't looking at your circumstance. Your circumstance ain't got nothing to do with the greatness that's on the inside of you. You are unstoppable. Who am I preaching to right now? Sit down. Sit down. And I'm going to keep on preaching like this every Tuesday night until you recognize that there's greatness in you. Until you recognize that the devil is trying to trick you. That you recognize that you bigger than they want you to believe you are. Somebody give him a shout right now. Sit down for a minute. Sit down, y'all. Let me just. Ain't nothing little about you. Y'all look like y'all scared to believe it. I said, ain't nothing little about you. And as soon as you let God snap your mind, as soon as you let God snap the words of your cousins out of your mind and your fake friends out of your mind, as soon as you let God snap religion off of your brain and you get in the spirit, you're going to see things that you ain't never seen before. I hear the Bible say, eyes haven't seen, the ears have heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men the things that God has prepared for you. Sit down for a second because I got to calm down to tell you this. I got to calm down to tell you this. Lord Jesus, I just need one person. All I need is one. I don't even need all y'all. I just need one person to say this out of your spirit. He already prepared it for me. It's already prepared. It's waiting on me to get a right mindset. It's already prepared. He ain't got to make it. He ain't got to create it. He ain't got to work it out. He ain't got to fix it. It's already, already prepared. You need to give God a shout. Shout if you believe it. Shout if you believe it. Okay, listen. Listen, sit down. Sit down, let me just... Lord, let me get to this part right here. Let me get to this part right here. It's already. Y'all ain't getting that. See, you got to understand that the reason why you are and were saved by grace. Now, this is going to take you out because I just. Now, we want to get the church back after this. But the reason why you got saved, the reason why your life was was picked up by God and the reason why he is gracing you to still have a desire to be saved is because he can't go back and change what he prepared no see I gotta I gotta give it to you like this it's like it's like if I like, like today, I give you a perfect example. The Lord said to me today, he said, I want you to invite some people from the Tuesday night live to eat with you tonight. And so we called the chef and I said, prepare a meal and lay it out in the green room. I said, because there's some people that God want me to invite them to sit at the table. now." You done got in your car, you done drove all the way here, you done had a headache, you done hollered at your kids, your day at work been crazy, all that, everything. You sitting up in here, you trying to concentrate, you trying to praise God. But what somebody don't know in here that I've already paid for and prepared a meal for you, that as soon as service is over, you going to go eat with me. Now what am I saying? As soon as you make up in your mind that the drama in your life is over, there's something that's already been prepared for you. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. I'm trying to tell 
you that no weapon that's formed against you can stop what God has prepared. I'm trying to tell you that no daughter that come against you can stop what God prepared. A lie can't stop it. Gossip can't stop it. Pain can't stop it. Sickness can't stop it. Disease can't stop it. You might as well take it. You might as well grab it. You might as well praise it. It's already prepared for you. Wait. Wait. So let me. Let me make it plain. Let me make it plain. No, sit down for a second. Let me make it plain. Jesus. Jesus. Now let me make it plain because some of y'all, some of y'all about to get it. I see it all over you. Some of y'all got that. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, he done prepared something for me? Wait a minute, my destiny is already prepared? Wait a minute, hold on a minute. I'm sitting up here being all upset because I ain't got college money when he done already prepared it for me? Okay, the reason why you ain't got it is because your mind ain't prepared to receive it. It ain't because it ain't already there. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me because the Bible said that my God shall supply all of your need. I'm not hearing y'all. Which means if you need it, he already done prepared it. You gotta tell the devil I changed my mind. I'm going after my destiny. Watch this. And let me give you scripture on this. Let me give No, no, y'all sit down. Let me, let me give you scripture on this. That's why y'all gonna praise him because we in the warehouse. They way over there on the wall. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. I love this place. I love this place. But we got room to run. We got room to go to the wall everywhere. Y'all ain't saying nothing. But we done even, we done even decided. We getting ready to, they gonna do something else to our floors. And then we gonna start right where, right where you are in your seat right now. Wherever the Lord changed your life, we're going to let you sign your name right there on the ground. Because, see, you got to remind the devil. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. Some, sometimes you got to walk back in here before service starts while the devil messing with you. And you got to walk him over to the row and say, you see this right here? I remember the night. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I wish I had somebody to praise him. I remember the day. I remember the morning. I signed my name. I remember when God set me free. I remember when God opened up a door. I remember. Somebody give him a shout right now. Hey! Somebody shout right now. Hey! Somebody shout right now. Hey! Give him a shout. Give him a shout. Give him a shout! Give him a shout! Give him a shout! Let me tell you. Sit down, let me tell you. Let me tell you. You get this? You understand? You understand? You understand them, baby? You getting it? You getting it, baby? I see it. You ain't doing a lot of crime, but it's all right. But I, I can see it in your eyes. I can see it in your eyes. You getting it? I can see you getting it. Cause see, I, our young people in this ministry, it's gonna be some young people to be reckoned with. Baby, they, they gonna know. They gon' they gon' know where you fellowship at. Cause they gonna be telling my hey, you know what? I don't know where I'm going. I'm just my mama ain't got no money for us to go to college. 
my young people going to say, honey, I rebuke that. I got to get away from you because I can't even hear no talk like that. Because, baby, that's some, that's all that negativity and all that. Because my way is already prepared. I know what God's going to do for me. And if my mom ain't got no money, he going to open up a new door for me. So guess what? When you get through with all that negativity, you call me. Other than that, miss me on that. Don't save me none of that. I got to go. Somebody give God a praise. He said, watch this. Now I'm going to show you the scripture to show you that we ain't just having a good time. Samuel said, all right, I'm going to close with this and I'm going to pick this up on Tuesday. Samuel said, see one focus. Tell yourself that, say one focus. One focus. Somebody come tell me. And did you hear what happened? Oh, hold on, boy. One focus. Go tell him, miss me on all that. Don't save me none of that one. I don't want no term. You trying to get to your destiny, they gonna tell you, you know, honey, Carol and Johnny had to fight. miss me on all that. One focus. Now you won't talk about where I'm going to school at. You won't talk about where I can get some grant money. You want to talk about some people you want to introduce me to that's in my same field? Then talk to me. You want to talk to me about something else? I have one focus. And they're going to think you crazy because she acting up. Mm-hmm. 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 Saul said, Saul said, okay, well, take me to this. Take me to the seer. And when he got to, got to Samuel, this gonna, this gonna bless y'all like it blessed me. When he got to Samuel, Samuel said, he said, um, Saul said, I'm looking for my, my daddy's donkeys. And, and so the little boy told him, he said, well, first of all, you're going to see a seer, so you can't go without an offering. Cause we gotta, we gotta take the man of God offering. So they gave him, a, he gave him an offering and he said, he said, this, this is Saul. This is Saul. Tell me where my father's donkeys are. And Samuel appeared to ignore him and said, just come on up here. Don't, don't worry about that. Come on, come on, go and eat with me. And he told the chef, he said, you know, the special meal I told you to set aside, pull it out for him. Now, this is all confusing because this is just a lad that's looking for his daddy's donkeys. And he done walked up on the prophet of the nation. At that time, Samuel was the prophet that was operating nationwide. So the privilege to be up on the prophet nationwide. And he said, come on in and eat with me. That's where that thing hit my spirit at. He said, he said, and every Tuesday night, every member that's a part of the membership, you're going to invite a different person to come and eat with you. He said, because what I want them to know is that they have royalty and importance in their life. And that, and that they have been favored to sit in your presence so that you can impart into them the fact that they're not the tail, they are the head. And the fact that they are, oh, I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. And that the Lord has prepared a table before them. And that riches and wealth shall be a common place for them. And great people and great men will be common company for them. And they will not spend the rest of their lives sitting with peasants and poor people and broke people and depressed people. Who am I talking? talking to right now and I'm not preaching to anybody right now so he said come and eat with me he said come and eat with me now watch the meal watch the meal watch him by internet watch the meal he said eat with me and this boy's he's still fretting about the donkeys my donkeys my donkeys my, 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 my daddy he said don't, 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 don't worry about that now no, no, watch this he said he said don't worry about the donkeys because this is the secret. The Bible said, the Bible said that the day before he came, God spoke to Samuel and said, this little boy is coming to meet you. Now, what am I trying to tell you? I'm trying to tell you that your destiny has already been announced to the person that you're going to be connected with. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. 
Your divine connection is already in place. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. The Bible said that the day before he got there, God had already talked to the prophet about him. What am I trying to say to y'all? The day before y'all got here, God already talked to me about you. What am I saying? I'm trying to tell you that your destiny is at hand. Wait, 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 sit down, sit down, because you got to get this. The person, the person that is going to help you start your business is being talked to right now. See, y'all ain't, y- I can't get my hands. The person that is going to help you go to school, they already in place. Believe that. Step out here right now. Come here to me. Come here, baby. Come here, you. Step out here right now. Step out here right now. I just had to bring you close to me so I can, so we won't be making no mistakes of who I'm talking to. I said, believe it. Every dream you got, your problem, your problem ain't vision, your problem ain't dreams, your problem ain't talent. Your problem is focus. And the enemy always using people to throw your focus. And let me give you a secret to go into greatness. Always, from this night forward, start ridding yourself from people that are less than you. Because somebody that's less than you can't take you nowhere. Okay, I just said that to the whole room. I just said that to the whole room. I just said that to the whole room. Y'all gonna have to get y'all some more friends. Because, because, because first of all, you don't know what a friend is. A real friend is a person that know more than you know. A real friend ain't, come on, let's go shopping. A real friend is somebody that's got knowledge about where you trying to get to. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. Who am I talking to right now? When God said we are his friend, it is because he possessed information that you need to get you to your next level. He ain't trying to say he your shopping buddy. God ain't trying to say he your coffee. Buddy, God ain't trying to tell you he your lunch buddy. He's trying to tell you I got information for you. Now I just redescribe your friends. Sit down. I just I just put a new definition on friends. Cause anybody that can't take you to your next level, they is your friendly enemy. All right, I just said something right there. I just said something right there. I said, anybody that can't take you to your next level, they are your friendly enemy. You are going to lunch every day with the enemy. You are eating breakfast with the enemy. You are running around the mall with the enemy. I'm not hearing you talk to me. If you are the biggest thing in your circle, you in trouble. If you're the one that has to help everybody else with their bills, you are in trouble. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. If you're the person that everybody comes to wisdom and knowledge and they want to crown your shoulder, you are in trouble. As a matter of fact, you're not just in trouble, you in prison. As a, oh, I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. You can't get to destiny like like that. So watch this. Sit down now. I gotta go. Sit. I just want y'all to raise your hand and say, you helping me. Come on, I want to see somebody say, you helping me, because I gotta help you. I gotta help you. I gotta help you. Baby, you're going to be all right. Because the Holy Ghost, see, you don't have to understand something, but the Holy Ghost 
will anoint you to say no. He going to anoint you tonight to say no. Because you say yes too much. And that's why you stay depleted. And that's why you can't never get what you need. Because everybody else is sucking the life right out of you. I just preached that to somebody else in this building. You might as well take it. He gets to the prophet. And the man says, the man says, ain't he? Sit down. Have some dinner with me. And so he's having dinner with the prophet. And watch this. And the prophet says to him, as for your daddy's donkeys, they already been found. In other words, <laughs> all that that you fretting about is already taken care. Now, 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 watch this, watch this, watch this. Because see, I'm going to say that for somebody that's watching my internet because I want you to hear this. It's already done. Now, now, wait, wait, wait. Now, what's the guarantee? What's the guarantee? God help me. Because in my heart, everybody in my heart, I want to be the best possible teacher I can be in the spirit. In my heart. That, 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 I, haven't, I haven't been home since last Wednesday. I've been sleeping in the prayer room since last Wednesday. And my, my prayer is God just give me a people that want it and give me the, give me the wherewithal to be the best teacher I can be. And I said, he said, the reason why you can tell the people that, the, that their donkeys have been found, that all the loose stuff that you worry about, all the, and, and the when, and the this, and the that, and the then, and the condo, and the, and the, and and Junior's hiccups, and Suzette's measles, and all that, all that has been taken care of because he said to this man, now this, this right here made me fall backwards. I was sitting up on the pillow in my prayer room reading this and I just literally fell backwards on the floor. He said to him, all the donkeys and stuff has been taken care of. He said, and the reason why I want you to know that all of that has been taken care of, he said, because, because all of Israel is now in your hands, which means while you worried about some donkeys, I don't already reposition you. As a matter of fact, it wasn't even about the donkeys. Matter of fact, the donkeys got lost just to she get you to me, so I can tell you that your job is bigger than being your daddy's donkey finder. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me that what I have in store for your life is bigger than you chasing some animals. I'm not hearing nobody talk back. What God is gonna do in your life is bigger than you breaking up arguments with your best friend and all of that. What God is saying is your mind is on too much petty stuff because I want you to recognize that the call of God is big in your life. He said all of Israel is in your hands. You are about to become a king while you're worrying about donkeys. I don't hear nobody really shouting right there because I don't know if you really got what I just said. You are about to become a king while you're worrying about donkeys. He said, what I want you to know is that your mind is too low. And you got people, oh y'all, making you work on stuff that is not your grade. You got people that's got you caught up in stuff that is not your level. You are bigger than that. Who am I talking to right now? said you all of Israel is sitting in your hands right now while you talking about and how I'm going to pay my rent even God is saying please Go and sleep in the basement of your auntie's house if you have to during this season. Because what I want you to know is that the devil is after your focus. Why well, can't get nobody to say amen? He said to him, your destiny is at hand. So what am I saying? It wasn't about 
It wasn't about the trial. Watch this. That's why, see, y'all may, y'all, I gotta help y'all. I gotta help y'all. See, let me tell you something. It wasn't, it, it wasn't never about the trial. That's why you shout when, uh, when you're going through, cause it wasn't never about the trial. It was about getting you close enough to the prophetic for them to say to you, you too low. What your mind thinks about you is too low. So God got to put you in a, watch this, he got to put you in a, oh God situation. Because as long as you say an oh Rita, you're going to get what Rita think. As long as you say oh Carol, well, if I was you, because I know somebody that died of that, honey, I, I know because what's going to happen is next, you're going to start aching over here, and you're going to start aching down here, and after a while, you ain't going to be able to sleep at night, and you're going to have hot flashes, and then you're going to feel like you're choking at night, and I'm going to be praying for you. So God lets you go all the way down so you can say, oh God, he fixes so that ain't nobody got no answers, and all you, can, all you got is God, because it's at that point the Lord slaps you upside your head and says, stop all of that. You ain't getting ready to die. Stop all of that. You can get stuff again. Come out of that. Because the world is at your fingertips. While you sitting here complaining and being depressed. While you sitting here talking about what you ain't got. What is in your head that's greater. I just anointed you. I just given you authority. You got power with me. You got authority that you're not even using. Because you're wasting time. And the prophet, come here, baby. The prophet had to grab Saul by his hand and just throw him in a seat and say, Sit down, boy, you're in the wrong seat. And he didn't just throw him down. Watch this. He said to him, your daddy's donkeys have been found. Which means, which means you ain't doing nothing when somebody else can do what you're doing. What he was trying to say is you wasn't doing nothing. Now, now you out here and you've been called to be a king over Israel and you looking for donkeys. No, let us go find the real donkey finder because it ain't you. In other words, let us go find the real person that's going to worry about some bills because that ain't you. Let's go find the real person that's going to be depressed because they're going through a situation because that ain't you. Because what I've got for you is greater than that. see you I just saw you in the spirit in a high rise building I just saw you in corporate America God gonna give you favor you gonna be somebody you gonna make a lot of money you gonna be somebody important and if I live to see it you gonna find me one day and you gonna set properties I'm the president over I'm the vice president over cause God said you ain't small Change your company and God will help you change your mind. Somebody give a greatness. Greatness. You can have whatever you say. You can be whatever you want to be. There is no limitation. Money ain't your problem. God said decide tonight and he'll take your mind to greatness. Somebody lift your hands up in this place. Somebody lift your hands up in this place. Greatness, 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 take the limits off, take the limits off, take the limits off.
God said, you limited me. Take the limits off. Take the limits off. Stop telling me what you got. Stop telling me how much you got. Stop telling me what you can't do. I've given you the plan. Use it. Let your spirit bring it up. You don't know the atmosphere that we are in. There is no limitations. There is no limitations. None. You can't afford to be away from me for a while. You can't afford that. Because God is going to flip you quick. He's going to flip you in your head quick. You got to get a shot. He's going to flip you quick. He said, All of Israel is in your hands. Now watch this. Watch this. We had a woman... Raise your hand, baby. Step out here because I want people online to see who I'm talking about. The atmosphere that we're in. This woman has a has a pacemaker in her in her chest. We were in Tuesday night live. And I remember that night the spirit of God was unbearable. That was it was it was powerful. She was praising God up in the spirit high. She recently went to the doctor and she said, usually when my heart monitor malfunctions, it's like a two by four that hits me and knock me out. And she could instantly die. She went to the doctor and the doctor said, how are you doing? Because I see you had an episode. Are you okay? She said, I haven't had an episode. He said, yes, you did. And he told her the date. And she said, what time was it? He said, it was Tuesday at about 10 o'clock. The heart monitor stopped, but the presence of God kept it going. No, you don't hear what I'm saying. I said, the heart monitor stopped and the Lord rebooted it. No, you don't understand because there is no death in this atmosphere. Who am I talking to? That your dreams can live. Your visions can live. Everything that you believe in God for, it's coming back alive. If I can just get you to praise God, watching my internet, if I can just get you to magnify God, every dream and vision that the devil has tried to kill, God is resurrecting it right now. Somebody just start giving him praise. Praise! you right quick there is a supernatural presence that is in this place right now to restore dreams and visions there is a supernatural presence because the Lord is telling me right now that some of your divine connections they have been fought fed poison about you but God is going to correct them God's going to send them back to you they're going to repent the Lord said there's a supernatural atmosphere but you must praise him because when you praise him he's going to restore what the devil tried to take from you somebody give him a praise Give him a
joy. I speak a new strength. I speak new deliverance right now. I speak that every vision. I speak that every dream that you never given us, God. That you just started again. That you rebirth it again. That you started all over again. You said you have. You said you are maker. You said you the beginning. You said you the end. And God it is not the end. And so we speak life. We speak life. We speak abundant life. We speak abundant life. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Expand our territory. Broaden our tents. Open it up, God. We speak the prayer of Jabez. We speak multiplication. We speak it in Jesus' name. Somebody give him a praise right now. Somebody give him a praise right now. Enlarge our territory. Enlarge our territory. Enlarge our territory. Enlarge our territory. Enlarge my territory. Somebody begin to shout that. Enlarge my territory. He's doing it now by internet. Enlarge my territory. Hold my set to the head to the heart. said don't look to the left the Lord is saying don't look to the left don't look to the right one focus one focus you can't get that divided in your mind what you don't see that I see tonight is that he's bringing your vision to pass I just want one person to believe what I just said. I said what you don't see that I see tonight is that he's bringing your vision to pass. Somebody praise him if you believe it. Thank you. 
no boundaries I see increase all around me break forth break forth enlarge my territory no limits no boundaries I see increase all around us break forth break forth really enlarge my territory no limits no limits no boundaries no boundaries I see increase I see increase all around me break forth Break forth, break forth, release me, enlarge my territory, no limits, no limits, no limits, no boundaries, I see it, I see it, I see your increase, all around, all around, stretch forth, stretch forth. Oh, really? 
it. You better hear this as a prophetic word tonight. Whenever I say that word, you better grab this in the spirit. You better give God a praise because you don't know what I'm seeing happening. Yes. I'm seeing the shackles fall off. I'm seeing every limitation, everything the devil tried to use to bind you up. Who am I talking to right now? Because I want to see who I'm talking to now. I want you to tell me you're talking to me, prophetess. Everything that he had bound up, he got to let it go. Because the Lord just enlarged your territory. I just hear the Lord said, I just enlarged your territory. You better at home right now. In the next 30 seconds, everybody give him a praise. Because the Lord has just enlarged your territory. Somebody give him a praise. Come on, everybody, say it tonight. He'll watch my territory. He'll watch my territory. He'll watch my territory. Jesus. He'll watch my territory. Give me more power. He'll watch my territory. Hey, give me more power. He'll watch my territory. Come out, give him a praise Because you have to pay But he just made you the head You want to give him a chance Tonight, woman of God, tonight, man of God, he has enlarged your territory. Glory to your name, Jesus. I gotta go here. La 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 I hear the Lord said, I have enlarged it. All I need you to do is praise me because I have. Yeah. I have enlarged yeah. Hallelujah. 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 We I, I'm on, I'm on this, this journey, and I'm going to be preaching on this subject until God releases me. Turn around to three people and say one focus. One focus. Turn around to three people and say one focus. Uh uh. This happened, that happened, that. Uh uh. Uh uh. One focus. Spirit of the Lord said, Preach it until I tell you to stop. 
refrigerator until it gets into the fibers of the people. And I don't have time for foolishness. There's no way that I could build a ministry, just finished a new book, working on a new record, getting ready to do a conference, if my focus is divided. Lame people come and tell me, I was standing in a place yesterday, and I was greeting a lady, and I was talking to her, it was after one of our meetings, and she was like, Prophet, I'm praying for you, and that, I said, baby, you got the wrong one. Because I don't even know what you're talking about. Because I, I don't have time to listen. I don't have time to live on other people's websites. I got one focus. I, I'm going to turn my back to this side. I'm going to say it to this side. When I say that, because I tell people we don't, we're not a church. We're a movement. And everybody that's a part of the movement, I don't, I don't want you out places trying to defend me. Because you worried about something that I don't worry about. Because whoever talking to me about me is less than me. When your records go gold and your books hit the New York Times bestseller and you pack out auditoriums, come talk to me. Until then, you don't have to defend me. When people start saying stuff about me, you just look at them like, why y'all talking about that woman? She done got two buildings. She done got, why you talking about her? She playing in conference and she got, she getting ready to have another New York Times bestseller. I didn't have time for that. I'm, I'm shutting in, finishing my manuscript. I'm, I've been signed by the largest publishing company in this nation. I don't have time for it. That's right. Right, right. When God birthed this word in my spirit, one focus, I ain't got time for that. That's too little. That's too small. You too small that's saying it. I'm not going to even make you feel that important to give you that much leverage to make you think you that important for me to listen to. It. That's why I can stay lifted. Because I'm going to finish talking about this. That's why I can stay encouraged. Because I don't let John get in my spirit. Because the devil come to sabotage your focus. I ain't hear nobody talk to me. Yeah, yeah. I ain't hear nobody say nothing. You understand what I'm saying? Ain't nobody got time for that. I'm preparing for book tours and record tours and television networks and my manager on the phone talking to television people I'm preparing at the end of the month to start shooting a new movie who got time to be sitting on somebody's website talking about did you hear what they said about you heck no I ain't heard what they said about me cause whoever said it do they have a check yep. I want y'all to stop all this free listening Hello? stop all this free listening When I did the calculations, when I did the calculations of my life, and I did the calculations of the money that I've made and the calculations of the money that I'm going to make, I stand in this building worth $500,000 an hour. I don't have time to talk to you unless you have a half a million in your hand. I, 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 I ain't hear nobody talk to me. I ain't hear nobody talk to me. I don't, I can't, I can't entertain you. I, I can't go to your website unless you have a half a million. If I'm going to spend a half an hour looking at anything about you, you better have $250,000 to give me. Other than that, I am wasting money, not just time. You don't have time and that's what I want to instill into us as a family we don't have time for foolishness we business people over here and you're gonna be able to tell people that you need to stay away from
Because anybody always coming to you. And you know what I heard on the internet? Just keep looking at them right there and say in your mind, last time I'm going to talk to you. Because I already know you ain't got a life. I already know you ain't got a destiny. I already know you ain't got purpose. Because if you got time to sit on YouTube, you ain't got nothing. To, I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. You got time to sit and waste time on YouTube. You ain't got nothing in your future plan. Because everybody on there ain't got no jobs. People ain't going nowhere. They ain't going nowhere. One focus. I'm going to keep on making you say it. You're going to write it in your Bible. Right in the front of your Bible and the back of your Bible. Even when people come up to you and start saying, you know what they, and that just hurt my feelings. And, and let me talk to you about what they, and that, just look at them and say, one focus. You out of focus. Because that ain't got nothing to do with your destiny. That ain't got nothing to do with the restaurant you get ready to open up. What they said about you in the bathroom ain't got nothing to do with the beauty shop you get ready to open. Keep your focus. Because God is. Here's the inside thing. He testing you with jackasses. <laughs> In this building tonight, I got to go. But I'm not after congregation. I'm after a generation. I'm not trying to pastor church. I'm trying to pastor a movement. I'm trying to give people a different mindset. That there is greatness in you. You're bigger than you think you are. In this building tonight as we prepare to leave. I get ready for 5 a.m. prayer. You watching my internet. Email me your prayer request right now. Email me your prayer request right now. Because we are praying. And 5 a.m. on Sunday morning, this coming Sunday morning in this place, we're going to bombard heaven for you. And we won't be streaming it live. We will not be streaming it live. Because I just believe that there are some things that God wants to do secretly in this building. Some things that he wants to birth us into. And that's why he's raising up a nation, a one focused nation. That is our movement. I was talking to a pastor friend of mine. He's been my friend since I was 17 years old. And I was telling him about the vision that God gave me about the ministry. And in my spirit, I was already saying, we're getting ready to start saving money. So that we can take a trip to Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And take the movement to Milwaukee, Wisconsin. What is it? It's the liberation to think in the realm of freedom and to know that there is no limitations on what God can do and what he has done. And I am free to believe God. I'm free to believe God. And the God that I believe can do anything. That's why I'm going to let him do everything. You don't believe God, get away from me. You don't know how to trust him. Because over here is right or die. We trust him or we die. We don't have no other choice in the matter. Because he keeps telling me I'm still God. He keeps telling me, tell the people I said I'm still God. I'm still God and I can do anything but fail. You watch him by internet. He's still God. You in this building. He's still God. But as I begin to minister this word. This Levitical word. Why is the Lord my portion? And when you got one focus. You ain't got time to look around. Do you not know that when you on a. On a realm and a journey of one focus, you don't have time to doubt the Lord. My God, in this building tonight, I got to go because I feel the presence of God. If you asking me when I'm going home, I don't know when I'm going home. But I can't seem to get away from that prayer room. I just walk around the building at night because I know what God is doing. 
He is enlarging our territories. Somebody ought to just give him a praise right there if you believe that. going in this building tonight I just speak what God tell me to speak I just speak what God tell me to speak I'm going to share something with you all next week a vision that God gave me a message that he gave me and we were in the conference meeting the other day and I walked out of the prayer room to begin to share what God had given me because I wasn't going to come to the staff meeting. And I just jumped up and put on something and tied a scarf around my head and ran out and began to tell them what God showed me in the prayer room and our, our meeting just erupted. Our meeting erupted. Because God began to share with me. He said, this is the season of small things, but it is the seasons that I will take small things. He said, this is the season I'm going to prove myself to be God. He said, it won't be the big. He told me this. He said, it won't be the big. It's going to be the little. He said, it's going to be the acts of obedience through the little that I'm going to shift this nation. He said, because I'm going to prove to the world that I'm still God. I'm not hearing nobody say nothing. And see, some of us, some of us are in a, in a tensy in our mind because we think, oh, you know, you don't know what I'm going through. The Lord, the Lord began to say this to me, and I know it don't make no sense to nobody else, but it would make a sense to, to a faith person like myself. He said, this is all me. He said, this is all me that's got their finances tight. He said, because this is me, because I'm going to show them that you ain't hardly got nothing, but I'm going to take what you got. And I'm going to show you that I'm a God. And I'm going to show you that you're going to have more in this season with less than when you did when you had a job. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. I'm going to tell you. He's watching my internet. That's what he told me. And I ran out of the prayer room just tickled in my spirit because he said, I'm going to take the little that I asked them for. And he said, these are going to be the people that are going to walk in abundance. You're going to look back and say, I'm operating in more than I did when I did have a job. When I had two and three jobs, I got more now than I had before I got laid off. I'm not hearing y'all talk to me because he said, I'm going to show you that I'm still God. I'm going to prove to you so what I'm looking for, the Lord said, is people. It's people that's, that's willing to do the little. I just said something right there. It's people that's willing to do the little. And I'm not ready to release what he gave me because he told me he will give me the time and the season, but it's going to blow your mind. Because our staff meeting literally erupted when God gave me to release it to the staff first. And God just broke out in the staff meeting. And everybody said, this is of the Lord. And I know that it's of God. And in this building tonight, I won't stop. I won't stop because I heard the testimony tonight. And because of time restraint, we can't read to you all the testimonies that we get. We have a certain amount of window before I have to be up on the floor for the people that are watching by internet. And people that are watching by internet, the Lord has spoke to me about you. And beginning on next Tuesday, God is beginning to, te to, to speak to my heart about pre-ministering to you. There are some things that God wants me to say to you even before we go up live.
And so you're going to begin to have moments with me about 10 minutes before we go up live. So I want you not to just come at 8 o'clock and just log on. But you need to be logged on by 745. Because there are some things that God wants me to speak directly into your spirit before we go up live. Because the Spirit of the Lord said the next phase that we are getting ready to go through in the atmosphere in this building. There's a certain mindset that God wants you to have before you even go log it into the live service. Because I'm telling you, it is going to be as if you you are standing in this building. You are about to have divine visitations right in your living room, right in your office. As a matter of fact, while I'm talking, just lift your hands up because the Lord said he's even preparing your house right now. And God said if you would dare to begin to invite some of your friends over on Tuesday night. As a matter of fact, I see a group of y'all just shouting right now. I see a group of women that are shouting. Ain't nobody in the room but women. But God said because y'all have dared to have church in the air, the Lord has dared to provide your every need and the Lord has dared to let the same anointing that is in this building be in your kitchen, be in your basement, be in your living room as a matter of fact the Lord told me to tell you that you that are watching by internet, the Spirit of the Lord said, go out and buy you some bigger speakers. God said, go out and buy you some bigger speakers. He said, begin to attach some bigger speakers to your laptop because he said that the presence that's about to come through your laptop is going to fill your house. And God said, revival is about to break out in your living room. And the Lord said that he is going to begin to do the things where even you have your young people and your teenagers and your husband and your wives that don't want to go to church. God said he bringing church to them. Because church has now just got in the air. God said it's in the atmosphere. He said it's in the internet. It's in the airways. It's in the satellite. He said this is a nationwide worldwide revival. He said no matter where you're watching from. Those of you that are watching from the army. And you're watching from the marines. And you're a soldier. God said revival is about to break out in your camp. God said get as many soldiers as you possibly can. God said begin to gather soldiers up around your camp up because God said he's getting ready to do it and the spirit of the Lord is telling me to tell you Mr. Soldier and Miss Soldier that you won't die in the war. God begin to tell me right now that some of you all that are watching there's one woman that's watching that the spirit of fear is on you because of where you are but God said you will not die but by oh my God I hear the Lord saying that you yes you will watch people die but I will spare your life for the ministry that ain't you have just camped around you and God told me to tell you I have not given you the spirit of fear but the spirit of love and a sound mind and God said be not afraid for though I am with you he said though a host may rise against you yet you will be comforted in this that I am the Lord your God and that I cover you from the top of your head to the sole of your feet I have assigned Michael the archangel to encamp round about you a heavenly host is in your camp God said yes even your camp will be saved God said yes revival is breaking out on your base uh, said the spirit of the living God somebody give God a praise in this place somebody give him a praise he's taking little he's taking little and he's doing much And it is the people that will consistently, not just one time, because I'm looking when I go back in the back room after the service has gone off, and God said it's not just the one time, but it is the people that is across this country and in this building that dare to trust God every time that dare to say, God, I'm not afraid ever to. Huh. That dare to say to God, I'm going to move every time I hear your spirit because I may not understand it. And it's not conceivable to me. But I do know that my breakthrough is in it. And you watching by internet in this building, God spoke to me about 21 people in this building. But you watch him by internet. God is keep pulling me to the screen. Because he said there is some specific words that I'm going to begin to minister. And when I say send me your prayer request. I want to tell you this by internet. The other night when I was laying on the couch. 
And Sister Chris and I were reading all of those emails, stacks of them. And we were going through the prayer request. The Lord right then were giving me words for several of you. And I began to speak the words out in the atmosphere. And the Spirit of the Lord said, this is what I want you to do. Those that I've given you a word, I want you to get a pen. And when you read the prayer request, I want you to write down what I said. And the next week before the service opens up, I want you to talk back into the camera and release the word of the Lord and the word of prophecy for the people that I will show you and the people that you will hold their prayer request in your hand. And that's why when the Lord has given me to tell you to write your prayer request and send it in, it's not just by, by happenstance. I'm not just doing this because I don't have nothing else to do. I'm doing it because there is a need that God wants to meet and there's a yoke that God is going to break. And there is a word that God wants to deliver into your household. And so the Spirit of the Lord said, this is a season of obedience for you. This is not a season for you to calculate and say, well, Lord, you know what? I only have this. I only have this. And how am I going to do this? And how am I going to do this? And the Spirit of the Lord said, just like he has warned the Spirit of David, do not count. Do not begin to count on God. He said, because eyes have been seen and ears have been heard, and neither has it entered into the hearts of men the things that God has prepared for those that love him. And the Spirit of the Lord said, don't count, just obey. Because the Word of the Lord says, if you regard the wind, you would not sow. And God said, this is your season for great miracles. How do I know it? Because I'm standing in one. How do I know it? Because this building is a miracle. How do I know it? Because I am a miracle. How do I know it? Because there's miracle people sitting all over this building. How do I know it? Because there's a miracle person that's sitting behind this camera. They're sitting looking into this line and knowing that you got history with God. The Spirit of the Lord said, do not get here and begin to shake on him. Because he's the same God he was yesterday, today and forevermore. If you are watching by internet and God dealt with me and spoke to me, count me out 21 envelopes. Because the Lord said to me, I'm going to obey the Lord. And I'm not responsible for who responds. I'm responsible to say everything that he tell me to say because I keep seeing him. Do the supernatural for me because I obeyed him. Those of you that sold the 107, your prayer cloth went out. It went out on Monday just like we said it did. And it should be arriving in your house. And God began to say to me, don't stop. Don't stop. He said, get some more sheets and begin to lay on some sheets. He said, because the sweat from your body. He said, the perspiration from your body. The intensity of prayer. Here at 5 a.m. and in this building, you want to send that to the household of people. And you that are watching right now, you pick up the phone. And you dial 866-942-9686. Because the Spirit of the Lord said, I'm still sitting on the 107 seat. And I'm still asking you to lay on some sheets. Because the miracle testimony that's going to hit the airways behind the sheets that are going out in the mail. Let me tell you something. The sheets got ready to go out and there was some kind of situation with them. And when we got to the post office, the lady asked my worker, she said, what are you doing this for? She said, prophet is buying them. And it wasn't supposed to go out. She pulled in the back room and she said, whatever I can do for this woman. She said, because you don't know what this lady's life pulled me out of. I'm here to tell you that even the favor of God, because the Lord said they were supposed to go out Monday. Monday. And that's how precise I was. When I found out that they were they were dragging their feet, I just began to go through the office and say, get to the post office right now. Because they have to have Monday's day. Because God said he was going to do exceedingly in abundance. I don't play with your prayer request. I don't play with your seed offering. And God is saying, lay down again on some more sheets. Because as they go out in the mail and reach your house, I'm going to bring deliverance. As you step them next to your doorway, he said, favor is going to refuse to let you go. Somebody in this building give God a shout right now. I said give him a shout not a praise. I said give him a shout not a praise. I said give him a shout not a praise. Enlarge my temple. 866-942-9686 Pick up the phone now and sow that 107 seed. And your prayer clock is going out. 866-942-9686. God said be obedient to him. Because this is your season. And the prayer clock that's coming to your house is going to change your life forever. Somebody give him a praise right now.
we're going out on tomorrow and getting more sheets and we will be laying on well I will be I don't say we will be I will be stacking a stack of sheets up here for Sunday morning 5 a.m. prayer you in this building right now and you send prophet is bind them God is talking to me come and get this envelope right now get up out of your seat and come quickly the Spirit of the Lord said there are 21 persons in this building because you know what you said, how do I know God is talking to me? Because you got it. That's how you know he's talking to you. Somebody move quickly. Somebody move quickly. Somebody move quickly. Well, how do I know he's talking to me? Because you got it. If you didn't have it, he wasn't talking to you. Amen, somebody. Somebody in this building begin to worship God. Somebody in this building begin to worship God. The other seven people is in this building. Don't let the devil trick you like that. Somebody come on and worship God. The other seven people is in this building. Don't let the devil trick you like that. Don't sit there and count money. Don't count money, because you won't be able to count favor. Somebody in this building, come on and give God a praise. Those other four people are in this building. Don't let the enemy trick you like that. Don't let him trick you like that. You're in this building. You said, Prophet, is bond and my last. No, it's your beginning. Don't count money, because you will not be able to count Praise the Lord. Wasn't that absolutely amazing to see how God moved tonight? Stay focused. Send your seat tonight for 107 to 866-942-9686. Don't delay. Stay focused on what God has told you to do. I want to remind you, space is limited for the Tom Bynum Institute Therapy Class with Dr. Bynum and Dr. Carolyn Showell for 2009 South Eastern Women's Summit. Desperation to destiny in Hampton, Virginia. It's almost full to capacity. Call right now, 866-942-9686. Preferred seating available only. Join us next week in Fort Wayne, Indiana, a full force international ministry on next Thursday, Friday, this Thursday and Friday, July 30th and 31st. Doors open at 7 p.m. nightly. The time is now. The table is set. The stage is prepared. Get ready, Fort Wayne, Indiana. The prophet to the nation, Dr. Juanita Bottom II, is coming to your city. This is an important prophetic season. You don't want to miss it. All that God has in store for you. For more information, go to the website. What's happening right now? Go to the website. Don't forget. Get your testimony as well as your prayer request. We want to hear what God is doing through your life. Log in to JuanitaBynum.com. Let me know when it's up. Let me have the internet back. God is talking to somebody tonight. The Spirit of the Lord is talking to somebody. God is talking to somebody. I just asked them to give me back the internet. Because the Spirit of the Lord told me to come back to this camera. And he told me just now that there are at least 100 persons that are watching tonight that this cloth needs to come into your house. And God said for me to tell you that this is not the season for fear. I only come back to the camera after the commentators begin to talk when the Lord prompts it in my spirit. And he just prompted my spirit very strong that at least 100 persons that are watching today you are getting ready to receive a supernatural miracle and this is not fake we don't make up testimonies we don't make up testimonies to try to convince you because guess what i'll get in trouble with god but the spirit of the lord told me to come back to this camera and tell you that you're shaking and that you're afraid because you said if i send this this is my last whole cake this is the last seed that i have and what i'm gonna do for next week and the Spirit of the Lord is telling me to tell you that he's a multiplying God. And because the Spirit of the Prophet is asking you to obey God. Not giving it to me. But giving it to the kingdom so that God can do just what he's doing right now. And that is send the word of the Lord nationwide. Because your seed is about to give God a voice. And a voice to be heard by the world. God said favor is going to refuse to let you go. He said pick up the phone now and obey him. No, I'm not shouting, but he said, obey him. 
866-942-9686. God is talking to you. Somebody come on and begin to worship the Lord. Send your seed tonight. 866 942-9686. Did you hear what God is saying tonight? Don't forget, send your seed. Stay focused. 866-942-9686. We celebrate God tonight. We celebrate the warehouse. We celebrate when you divine a ministry the second. You need to be here. You need to call 866-942-86. 9686. God bless you. We give a shout out to Prevailing Faith Ministries in Monroe and especially Dr. James Franklin Scott. God bless you. That's it. God bless you. That's mine.